Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm back here on the moon once again to give you my two cents on the charge move on Warhammer the Old World. Now we're all still learning this game and different people will have different expectations on different things that they're trying to get out of their hobby. And this is by no means a video designed to sort of tell you you're playing your game wrong, right? If you're in a gaming group and perhaps you're not playing to the exact letter of the rules, but you all agree and that's how you want to play, then fine. Have fun playing games of Warhammer. However, there are, of course, some of us who want to play in a more competitive sense, and therefore we want real clarity about the rules so that we can push the boundary of those rules and be able to have fun within that framework of trying to actually win the game. So we want to have specifics, right? We want to know what is the charge distance? How much do I need to roll on the dice to make this charge? So what does it actually say? So there's four main points in the rule book. Um, number one, you must endeavor to bring as many models as possible um, into base contact, right? Into base to base. Number two, you must move by the shortest route possible. Number three, you must, as far as possible, move in a straight line. And number four, you must ensure that you align against the charge target. Now, aligning is the old close the door in 8th edition, right? So if you can't align fully, if there's terrain in the way or an enemy unit in the way, then it's a disordered charge. Now, the first thing I notice when I see these four points is actually point number one and point number three are in contention with each other, right? If you're moving forward in a straight line, you're not necessarily maximizing base-to-base -base contact. And if you're maximizing base-to-base -base contact, you're normally not moving in a straight line, right? You have to wheel to a certain extent to um, get more models into base-to-base, -base, right? So what does that look like? Well, it looks something like this. I've got a little diagram in front of us here with our orc boys charging our dwarf crossbowmen. Essentially, there's going to be a big wheel in this situation, right, where, you, where the charge target is to one side of our unit. There's going to be a big wheel to try and maximize base-to-base -base contact, right? And then from there, we're moving straight forward, and then we align to the enemy. So perhaps in, in this diagram here, we've managed to get five orc boys in base-to-base -base contact and six of the dwarf crossbowmen. However, in Warhammer the Old World, the whole of the front rank gets to fight. And so it's those six orc boys fighting the seven dwarf crossbowmen. So that orc boy on the far right there, who's not in base to base with anything, still gets to swing. And so does that dwarf crossbowman on the far left there, right? So um, we've maximized base to base contact, but because everyone's only got one attack, it's not really making any difference in terms of how much dice we throw. But it obviously looks better, doesn't it, when more people are in base to base. Then we see that in italics, Further down the page here, it says, note, a charging unit does not have to complete its wheel if doing so would cause it to make a failed charge. Okay, so what do we think there? That just means that in terms of the minimum we need to roll on the dice to make the charge, it's just how can we make contact with the enemy unit moving in a straight line as possible. In other words, this line here kind of overrules our point number one on our charge rules, right? It said you must maximize, but here it says, however, you don't have to maximize because that might cause you to fail your charge, right? So we roll the dice, we see what our charge distance is, and then we see, are we gonna make the charge first of all by moving in a straight line? If so, great, or the minimum wheel necessary to move in a straight line and make contact with our enemy, um, and then for each additional inch we have, we can wheel a bit more to try and maximize it's a bit more. Okay, so let's do some examples. So here in this example, we can actually just move in a straight line forward to make contact with the enemy. So if we measured that and that was seven inches, and then I got a three on my dice here, four plus three is seven, that's the minimum. So I would actually just move straight forward. I don't have any spare inches on my dice roll to uh, maximize any more than that. And so we're only going to get one or two orc boys into base to base, right? But it's Warhammer the Old World. All six of those orc boys get to swing. All seven of those dwarf quarrelers get to swing. The whole of the front rank gets to swing. Okay, those are the rules. But look at that. Doesn't look that good, does it? It kind of looks a bit strange, right? It doesn't look like two units that are actually fighting each other. It looks like two units that have accidentally bumped into each other. They've accidentally kind of clipped each other's corners of the unit. And of course, the way that the rules work with the whole give ground and so on, 
it might just stick like that. There's no combat reforms. At least it doesn't mention it in the rulebook, right? So it'll just stay like that for a few turns until one of them breaks or one of them's wiped out. And it doesn't look that good, does it? I mean, I say that as someone who's obviously been playing 8th edition where there was a rule you actually got a free 90-inch wheel, no, sorry, 90-degree wheel um, during your charge move, right? So if you rolled the minimum charge distance you would then automatically wheel as much as you need to within 90 degrees to maximize fully right so those two units would be um uh, would be maximized base to base contact let's look at this example now because here it gets a little bit more extreme and actually what i see on battle reports online over the past few weeks is that different people are doing this in different ways some people are just kind of ignoring the rules altogether in the sense that they're just measuring closest to closest on the two units um, and ignoring the wheel distance some people are trying to pay for that wheel distance out of the charge move um, but are kind of over measuring it and measuring it so that your unit would have to be um, at the same angle as the unit you're charging so it will just be able to move straight forward um, as you can see look in this diagram the Orc boys here cannot just move straight forward into base space contact. They must wheel a little bit. Now, according to point number one on our four rules, then, to maximize base contact, they're going to have to do a pretty epic wheel, right, um, in order to get five Orc boys into combat like that and then close the door, right, or align to the enemy, it's called now. So that would maximize. But that is such a big distance there um, that it's unlikely you're going to get that on your charge roll. Right? It's unlikely that you're going to be able to maximize like that because that is a lot of that's a big wheel, which at D6 plus four is unlikely to be achieved, right? Um so that will be unlikely to happen. What is the minimum you need on the dice then? Well, there's two measurements you need to do to calculate it, right? Because you've got to do the wheel, and I think all the only wheel that you really need is like that. Because that will mean that you can continue in a straight line and make contact with the enemy. Okay? So that's a small wheel plus the distance from one unit to the other. And you move straight in like that. You clip on the corner and then you align to the enemy like that. Now look, looks a bit strange, doesn't it? Just two units clipped on the corner like that. But it's the old world. The whole of the front rank gets to fight on both of those units. And it could stay like that for a few turns as one unit gives ground um and there's no combat reforms now out of our four points here point number one is starting to look a bit silly now how they say you must endeavor to mean as to, to bring as many models into base contact as possible because it's kind of overruled by our point in italics further down the page which says look it's not that important. It's actually point three that's more important, isn't it? Moving forward in a straight line as possible. Because if I don't have the inches to wheel, I don't really have to. I can just clip on the corner like that. So, you know, if I'm uh, eight inches away, uh, I need a four on the dice, a movement four with the orcs. I need a four on the dice to make those eight inches. Um, sure, I could roll a five or a six and be able to wheel a little bit and perhaps get an extra one or two orc boys into base to base. But basically I'm not, it's going to be rare in those kind of charges that I'm going to get everyone into base to base. And that's how it works. Now in older editions, an eighth edition, for example, you would just measure closest to closest, quite simple, speeds it up. You don't have to muck around by measuring the wheel. Again, this video isn't to, um, uh, get a, um, a <laughs> vociferous debate going about whether 8th edition is better than the old world. Worth saying, I'm really enjoying playing the old world at the moment, and um, I hope that it's a success. And for that reason that I'm making these kinds of videos, in other, in other words, to point out what some of the um, uh, uh, downsides can be when you try and push the limits of the game and it starts to sort of fray around the edges. Because um, right now, I'm having to measure two distances to calculate my charge distance, right? I'm having to measure how much I need to wheel by and then the distance in order to clip onto the corner of that unit. Um, and so even if I just make that charge, okay, let's say it's a two inch wheel plus a six inch move. So I need an eight. I've had to measure twice 
okay i've had to measure the wheel on one side and the distance on the other side and then when they do clip corner to corner it doesn't really look that nice okay so those are my two cents let me know what you think let's get a bit of a, a discussion going either on youtube or on the uh, on the social media or whatever does something need to be done about these charge distances? Are you measuring it like this in your games? Or are you just measuring it once, closest to closest, and taking that as the charge distance? To what extent are you paying for that wheel when you make charges in Warhammer the Old World? Cheers, guys. See you on the next one.